Hello everyone, I'm David, and today we're diving into a rather troubling story. Back in the 2012 Summer Olympics held in London, a Puerto Rican boxer by the name of Felix Verdejo Sanchez emerged as a standout star. Dubbed a diamond and regarded as one of the most promising talents from his nation, he was expected to clinch titles and secure gold medals. At that time, it appeared to all that this gifted and driven young athlete was destined for extraordinary success in the sporting world. In 2021, the boxer's name once again made headlines around the globe, but this time it was splashed across the crime reports. This narrative delves into a teenage fixation that evolved into a form of dependency, culminating in a horrific tragedy. It also recounts the tale of the fighter behind the most celebrated knockout of 2014, who had been lauded and supported by the two-time Olympic champion Vasily Lomachenko, nearly facing the death penalty before ultimately being sentenced to life imprisonment. Remarkably, despite concrete evidence and the confessions from the boxer's associate, he continues to deny any wrongdoing up to the present day. The individual who was once tipped to be a luminary in the world of boxing was born on May 19, 1993, in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Raised in a humble yet large family, he had an affinity for sports from a very young age. Initially, he aspired to pursue a career in baseball. However, his destiny took a turn following an amusing episode. At the age of nine, during a visit by a family friend and his son, who was of the same age, the boys ended up fighting in the yard after a disagreement. After separating them, the father of the would-be boxer remarked that if his son ever wished to fight again, he should do so with boxing gloves on. Prompted by this incident, Felix asked to be taken to a local gym. There, as he would later confess, he fell in love with boxing from the very first training session. By the age of 16, he had clinched the Pan American Junior Championships. The following year, he secured the championship title in his homeland, and then he represented his country at the London Olympic Games, making it to the quarterfinals. That same year marked the commencement of his illustrious professional boxing career. Verdejo fought in a total of 29 bouts, securing 27 wins with conviction. In 2014, he earned recognition for delivering the year's best knockout in his match against Sergio Villanueva. The subsequent year, Felix captured his first championship title, winning the WBO Latino belt, which he went on to defend successfully six times over two years. To all who witnessed his prowess in the ring, it was clear this young athlete was destined to etch his name into the annals of global boxing history. Now, let's introduce Keishla Rodriguez. She was born in November 1993 in San Juan, with the full name Keishla Madeleine Rodriguez Ortiz. Her parents, Jose and Kayla Rodriguez, also had another daughter together, Baris Nicole, and raised Kayla's son, Jonathan, from a previous relationship. Kishla was a vibrant and outgoing young girl. She excelled academically and had a profound love for animals, harboring aspirations of becoming a veterinarian someday. Her closest confidant was her sister, Baris, with whom she shared all her secrets and concerns. Keishla attended the same school as Felix Verdejo, who was her contemporary. The two had known each other since childhood, and during their teenage years, a romantic relationship developed between them. In 2011, the Rodriguez family underwent a significant change when the parents, Jose and Kayla, decided to divorce and go their separate ways. Kayla relocated to relatives in Florida, while her daughters, who had by then reached adulthood, chose to remain in San Juan. Although each sister was leading her own life, they maintained a strong bond, staying in close contact and sharing with each other every detail of their lives. At the age of 18, a talented boxer, who had already competed in the Olympic Games, became involved with a young schoolgirl and aspiring model named Elise Marie Santiago Sierra. At that time, Elise was merely 14 years old and still attending school, but she harbored grand aspirations for her future with the renowned athlete. Notably, Elisa's parents were supportive of this relationship. Felix, who was both attractive and gifted, enjoyed widespread fame as a boxing star and basked in the adoration of numerous fans. 
Despite his serious relationship with Elise, he didn't forego the opportunity for fleeting romances or flings on the side. Furthermore, his continued interaction with his school friend Keshla added another layer of complexity to his personal life. Keshla's sister, Bares, and their mother, Kayla Rodriguez, were aware of the affair but disapproved of the relationship. The situation was fraught with ambiguity. On one hand, Elise regarded herself as the athlete's sole love and envisioned a future together, including marriage and long-term plans. On the other hand, Keishla was aware of Felix's engagement, yet he kept her entangled in the relationship. Complicating matters, Felix was Keishla's first love, and despite her awareness of the situation, she still harbored hope of being his priority. In 2016, the boxer indeed married the young Elis, who was almost 19 years old at the time. Elis had already achieved significant fame as a model, boasting tens of thousands of followers on social media, and had even established her own beauty studio specializing in eyelash extensions. However, tragedy struck just a few months after their wedding in August of the same year, when the athlete was involved in a severe car accident while speeding on his motorcycle. He was hospitalized in critical condition with head injuries, bruises, and lacerations. His trainer, Ricky Marquez, feared that the promising boxer's career might be derailed, but against the odds, Felix made a remarkable recovery and swiftly returned to the ring, defying the gloomy prognosis. In September 2019, the boxer shared a photo on his social media profile featuring Elise visibly pregnant. Alongside the image, he captioned, Soon I will meet my daddy's princess. A month later, he joyfully announced the birth of their daughter, Miranda Verdejo Santiago. In public, he portrayed himself as a devoted husband, doting father, and model family man. However, unbeknownst to his wife, he clandestinely maintained a relationship with Keishla, who remained unable to let go. As Elise later revealed, she had suspicions that her husband was being unfaithful, but each time he tearfully promised to end the affair. Despite Keishla's attempts to end the painful relationship, Felix refused to let her leave. Fearing repercussions, Keishla refrained from seeking other relationships as the boxer threatened dire consequences if he discovered she was involved with someone else. Despite the turmoil, Keishla, who had harbored feelings for Verdejo since high school, continued to love him despite the challenges they faced. Rodriguez, as intended, pursued a career dedicated to caring for animals and secured a position at the Center of Veterinary Medicine and Aesthetics. Described by her colleagues as conscientious, diligent, and highly responsible, she immersed herself in her work. At home, she shared her space with two beloved dogs and a cherished cat, showering them with adoration and care. In 2020, Elise stumbled upon her husband's correspondence with multiple mistresses, including Keishla. Enraged, she confronted her husband, sparking a heated argument that resulted in her kicking him out of the house. Threatening divorce and the denial of access to their daughter, Elise's ultimatum struck a nerve. Coupled with a decline in the athlete's career, he was keen to avoid further unnecessary trouble. Consequently, he ceased seeing Rodriguez for a period. However, Felix's grip on Keishla remained firm as he sought to exert control over nearly every aspect of her life. Despite their hiatus, their clandestine encounters eventually resumed, leading to Keisha's discovery of her pregnancy in April 2021. After purchasing a rapid test from the drugstore, which only confirmed her suspicions, Keishla reached out to her sister, confiding in her about her tumultuous relationship with the athlete. Despite the complexities, Keishla was resolute in her decision not to undergo an abortion. At 27 years old, she felt prepared to embrace motherhood, even if it meant raising the child alone. Shortly thereafter, Keishla mustered the courage to inform the father of her child, hoping for his acceptance. However, Felix's reaction was far from supportive. Angered by the news, he demanded that she visit a doctor and consider terminating the pregnancy. Firm in her resolve, Keishla adamantly refused, prompting Felix to resort to threats and continued insistence. Felix's concern over his reputation being tarnished by an illegitimate child drove him to insist on Keishla terminating the pregnancy. 
However, despite his demands, Keisha remained steadfast in her decision to keep the baby. When Keishla confirmed her pregnancy through a hospital visit and obtained a certificate as proof, she informed Felix of the news, further enraging him. Refusing to believe her, Felix demanded to see the medical certificate personally. He arranged to meet Keishla in a crowded place that evening, under the pretext of verifying the authenticity of the certificate. This tactic didn't surprise Keishla, as discretion was always a priority for them, avoiding drawing attention to their relationship in public. A few days before the scheduled meeting, the boxer paid a visit to his old friend, Luis Antonio Cadiz, who worked at a local machine shop and had connections in the criminal underworld, dealing in illegal drugs. Felix explained the situation briefly and requested Luis's help in dealing with his pregnant mistress. Although apprehensive due to his past run-ins with the police, Luis was swayed by Felix's assurances that everything would proceed smoothly without any risk of police involvement. Furthermore, Felix sweetened the deal by promising a substantial cash reward, ultimately convincing Luis to agree to assist him. With the help of his accomplice, Felix arranged a call with Kishla, informing her of a meeting planned for the evening of April 29th to discuss her pregnancy and decide on their next steps. Immediately after this conversation, Kishla contacted her sister again, disclosing everything that had transpired. Despite Keishla's lingering hope that Felix would accept their child and not insist on an abortion, Barras perceived the situation as deeply troubling. Aware of the threats Felix had made against her sister, Barras grew increasingly concerned for Keishla's safety. She reached out to their mother, sharing her apprehensions, but despite their combined efforts, they were unable to dissuade Keishla from attending the fateful meeting. At the agreed-upon time, Rodriguez arrived at the meeting with a doctor's note in her own Kia Forte car. Meanwhile, Verdejo drove to the location in his pickup truck, with Luis concealed in the back. Upon arrival, Keishla got into Felix's car and presented him with the test results. Despite his repeated insistence on terminating the pregnancy, Keishla tearfully refused once more. As tensions escalated, the couple engaged in a heated argument, their voices rising to shouts. Suddenly, Felix lashed out and struck Keishla in the head with his fist, causing her to lose consciousness immediately. Until Keishla regained consciousness, Felix retrieved a syringe containing a large dose of illegal substances hidden in the glove compartment of the car, which Luis had acquired at his request. He injected Keishla with the substance. Then, with the help of his accomplice, they moved her to the back of the car, where they had already prepared pieces of wire and a concrete block. Binding Keishla, they attached the weight and covered her with a tarp to conceal her from view. Felix then returned to his pickup truck, while his accomplice took the wheel of Keishla's vehicle. Together, they drove to a deserted bridge over the San Jose Lagoon. Ensuring there were no witnesses, they threw Keishla, still alive, into the water below. To eliminate any possibility of survival, they fired several test shots from the firearms they had brought along. Concerned when Keishla failed to arrive at the Veterinary Medicine and Aesthetic Center the following day, her co-workers grew increasingly worried. Keishla was known for her reliability, making her absence without notice unusual. After numerous unsuccessful attempts to reach her by phone, they decided to contact her sister for information. However, all efforts to reach Keishla or her sister were in vain. Growing increasingly alarmed, Keishla's co-worker decided to visit her home. Upon arrival, they found no response at the door, but with the help of a spare key, they gained entry. Inside, they were met only by hungry animals who had gone without food for nearly 24 hours. With mounting panic, Barres realized the gravity of the situation and feared something terrible had befallen Keishla. She immediately contacted her mother, divulging all the details, and then promptly informed the police of her suspicions regarding her sister's disappearance and the threats she had received. Despite her distress, Barres also reached out to Felix, who denied any involvement, claiming to have spent the previous evening at home with his family. Meanwhile, Keishla's mother hastily boarded the first flight from Florida to San Juan, 
consumed by the fear that her daughter may have been taken to a private clinic for an abortion without her consent. The thought of Keishla no longer being alive was too unbearable for Kayla to entertain. As the investigation unfolded, authorities questioned Keishla's neighbors and co-workers, but no one reported any suspicious activity or provided useful leads. At the same time, messages regarding Keishla's disappearance were circulated on popular social media platforms, urging anyone with information about her fate or current whereabouts to come forward. The case garnered widespread attention, particularly after it was revealed that Keishla, who was in a long-term relationship with a famous athlete and expecting his child, had gone missing. Reporters flocked to interview Keishla's family members, who openly shared their suspicions and did not shy away from implicating Felix in the incident. On April 30th, Keishla's car was discovered abandoned on the east side of the city, containing her personal documents and belongings. Despite thorough inspection, no signs of struggle were evident inside the vehicle, offering a glimmer of hope for finding its owner alive. However, on May 1st, a passerby walking on the bridge over the lagoon spotted a peculiar shape resembling a human body in the shallow water below. Alerting the authorities, the passerby's discovery led to the recovery of a young woman's body from the water presumed to be the missing individual the entire city had been searching for in the preceding days. As members of the Rodriguez family arrived to identify the body, they clung to the hope until the last moment that it might not be Keishla. Regrettably, their hopes were dashed, as the body, having been submerged for several days, had undergone significant changes. However, it was swiftly identified by a distinctive tattoo adorning her arm. Upon learning of the grim discovery, the city's residents were incensed and took to the streets in spontaneous protests, demanding justice for the victim. The same day, Verdejo was apprehended and brought to the police station for interrogation. Despite mounting suspicion, the athlete adamantly denied any involvement, maintaining that he had been at home with his family on the night of Keisha's disappearance. There was insufficient evidence to charge Felix, who was released, which further increased public anger and frustration. The athlete's legal wife emerged as a crucial witness in the investigation. During her initial interrogation, she acknowledged her knowledge of her husband's affair with Keishla, but claimed to be unaware of the pregnancy until then. Moreover, she refrained from corroborating her husband's alibi, stating that he was not at home on the night of the murder. This revelation added weight to the suspicion surrounding Felix's involvement in the crime, intensifying the scrutiny placed upon him by law enforcement. The investigator's initial step was to review traffic surveillance footage along the route leading to the bridge from which Keishla was thrown. This review revealed Felix's pickup truck and Keishla's car traveling in close proximity to each other, indicating a potential connection. However, it was evident that the Kia Fort was not being driven by its owner. Consequently, Felix's car was seized on the same day for further examination. Upon inspection, traces of the victim's hair were discovered in the vehicle's body, providing critical evidence linking Felix to the crime scene and corroborating suspicions of his involvement in Keishla's murder. Luis was the first to surrender to the police, striking a deal to reveal the complete truth in exchange for a reduced sentence. Conversely, Felix was also apprehended but remained obstinate, refusing to cooperate with investigators, declining to answer questions, and persistently denying his involvement despite the overwhelming evidence against him. A firearm retrieved from Felix, authorized by an official permit, was confirmed to be the weapon used to shoot the victim from the bridge. Additionally, a thorough examination of cell phone records corroborated that Felix, Luis, and Keishla were all present at the same location on the night of the crime, further solidifying the case against them. Keishla's funeral, held on May 8th, became a national event that garnered extensive coverage on the news. It served as both a solemn farewell to the victim and a call to ensure that the perpetrators faced the full force of the law. Moreover, the ceremony served as a poignant reminder of the pervasive issue of gender violence. Rather than a traditional hearse, Keishla's coffin was transported to the cemetery 
in a white carriage with white flower petals showering down from above. Numerous prominent Puerto Rican figures, including celebrities, athletes, politicians, and public figures, spoke out against the high-profile tragedy, highlighting the urgency of addressing gender-based violence in society. Verdejo faced a multitude of charges, including carjacking, kidnapping, premeditated murder, and the murder of an unborn child. These offenses collectively warranted the death penalty. However, from the outset, the victim's relatives advocated for a sentence of life imprisonment, desiring that the perpetrator endure the consequences of his actions behind bars for the remainder of his life. Despite numerous postponements due to the global COVID-19 pandemic, the trial finally commenced in the spring of 2021, albeit conducted in virtual mode to ensure safety amidst the ongoing health crisis. The court determined that the crime was committed by a group of individuals acting in concert through premeditated conspiracy and with particular cruelty towards a pregnant woman. The chain of events from that fateful night, as well as the gruesome details of the crime, were pieced together primarily through the testimony of Luis, who did not deny his involvement. He confessed to obtaining the drug for injection at the request of a friend and procuring the wire and concrete block used to dispose of the body. Despite Luis's admission, Felix maintained his innocence throughout the trial. However, his steadfast denial did little to sway the court's judgment, as the evidence against him was overwhelming. The boxer's wife, who testified as a witness in court, swiftly initiated divorce proceedings shortly after her husband's arrest. She attempted to distance herself from the unfolding events concentrating on advancing her career and caring for their young daughter. According to certain sources, Elisa Santiago remarried not long afterward. In an interview, Elise disclosed that she had received numerous anonymous calls and messages containing death threats, including wishes for harm to herself and her daughter, Miranda. Speculation arose implicating the athlete's spouse as the potential mastermind behind the crime yet no concrete evidence linking her to the incident was uncovered. In the summer of 2023, it was revealed that the jury, after carefully reviewing all the evidence and hearing testimony from witnesses, had reached a verdict. Felix Verdejo and his accomplice Luis Cadiz were found guilty on each of the charges leveled against them. Despite this, the sentencing had not yet been carried out. The next court hearing was slated for mid-November 2023. It's anticipated that both men involved in the tragic deaths of KLA Rodriguez and her unborn child will likely receive life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. The wheels of justice are turning, albeit slowly, towards delivering the appropriate consequences for their actions. Thank you for watching. That was David with you. There are many more stories ahead.